Right, so we're now going to look at the console in uh, Chrome Developer Tools. And this is mainly going to be where you uh, either debug or uh, examine data within JavaScript or really any other messages that are thrown by scripts or your browser. So we're going to return back to the example where we are using uh, an Ajax request here to hit the users.php file, which basically just contains some JSON data. This doesn't have to come from your server, it can come from another server as well. Uh, but we can use the console to go ahead and actually output uh, what we need, basically. So we're hitting this users.php file. We are sending through this blah one, but we're going to ignore that for now. And over on the preview, we saw earlier that we can open and close this data here that's coming back from it. But when you are writing JavaScript, the console is going to become really, really useful. And there's a few ways that we can use the console. So the first way is to just click on the console tab just here. And the second way, because the console's uh, probably the most accessed area when you are uh, front end developing, particularly with JavaScript, what you can actually do is you can have another tab open. So for example, you could have the elements tab open and you can hit this little button here. That's going to bring up the console as well. So you can work simultaneously with the data here, CSS, for example, and you can also use the console down here. So it's good to know that you have this down here if you need it, along with any of the other tabs that you need to work with. What we're going to be doing though is we're going to be exclusively working with the console from this tab for now. So how do we work with the console? Well, let's take a look at a very basic example. Inside of this app.js file, let's go ahead and get rid of this data we're sending through. And in the success callback within the Ajax method on uh, within jQuery, let's go ahead and just pull this data in. So we now have this data, which is essentially just the data that's being returned from this file, which is just a JSON object, uh, as we've already seen. So how would we actually work with this? You know, we might go ahead and say something like if data dot uh, success equals true. Maybe if you're posting something, you know, there's there's a variety of ways to work with your data. But what if we want to just examine this data? Well, we can use console.log, which is basically going to log an item to the console. And we can pass in data there, which is a, an object. And when we go ahead and refresh, we see this object. Well, we see an array with three objects within it. If we expand this, we see 0, 1, and 2, so it's a zero index array. We see some JavaScript stuff in here. Uh, for example, we have a length property, which tells us the length. So we can do console log data dot length if we wanted to. And when we refresh, we get three just output here. Uh, but for now, what we're going to do is just look through this. So we can just examine really everything within here. Depending on the complexity of the data, this really does help because you can just see what you're working with. So for example, if you wanted to access the name on the first object here, you could just go ahead and say data zero dot name, and that's going to give you out Dale. So it's really useful to be able to work with this just so you know what kind of data you're working with, even if you have written the data yourself. So there's another way that we can work with the console. So let's just get rid of this and go ahead and refresh. So within JavaScript, you obviously write, uh, you know, whatever code you want to write. Uh, so for example, we could say something like um, var link equals document dot get element by ID. This is just raw JavaScript. We could say link over on index.html. We could have an anchor just in here with an ID of link and we could just say click me. Let's just put that href, href to a hash. When we refresh, we now have a um, variable called link, which is basically that element. So if we do a console log on link, when we refresh, we see that element just there. But more interestingly, what we can actually do is access any variables that are stored using the console. So if I just type link in and hit enter, that gives me what I already saw when I did a console output. What we could also do is we could, uh, you know, modify this. So we could say something like link dot click, hit enter. You can see that just appended a hash in the URL because that's essentially just 
uh, forcing that link to be clicked. This is using uh, the jQuery click method. We can also do, uh, we can write full code in here if we wanted to. So we could do something like alert one, that's gonna go ahead and give us an alert box out. So anything really you can do in here to play around. So if you wanted to start playing around with this link variable and adding an event listener maybe, you can do it all from the console here. Sometimes it's not entirely desirable to do that, but essentially, as long as you know it's there, it's really, really useful. So this is great for debugging if you were, say, just looping through a load of items or something and you want to just go ahead and console log these out, you could console log them out, see the values. When you are developing JavaScript, this really just does help you just see what kind of data that you're working with. Otherwise, you'd have no real way to see it. So for the console, that is pretty much it. And again, when you are developing, this is such a highly used part of Chrome developer tools. And once you start using it, you'll probably find you'll be lost without it.